We're back! God damn it. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Henry from the editing room for the future. As you can kind of tell, I am currently working on more projects. So, you know, that's going to be fun. But for now, I'd just like to say this episode is a bit of a mess. I was not recording things as they came. I was recording things as they came in. I've now decided to record everything in one big bulk setting. Also, yeah. Sorry that the content of the channel has, as far as my end, has been kind of weird these last few weeks. I graduated from college, so this month has been quite crazy with finals and graduation stuff. Next month I should be back on track. Also, the Birth by Sleep is going to be replacing Extreme Paint Brawl once, well, Extreme Paint Brawl is over. Also, the yearly movie game playthrough should be happening soon enough. Uh, just keep an eye out. You'll probably see episodes every now and then of it. Yeah. Other than that, I don't think there's a whole lot left to talk about. Also, sorry that I keep on looking off to the side. Uh, you beautiful people are right there, but also, I'm right here, so I want to double check that things make sense. Uh, yes. Oh, also, Lego removing tool. <laughs> yes, but for real, though. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Also, yes, you can tell that... I am right there, because of the massive glare. <laughs> uh, either way, I hope you enjoy. And, uh, yes, this month was pretty tiny. Expect May's to be quite huge, because that's when I got a lot of stuff. <laughs> That's lost. <laughs> uh, yes. Either way, have fun. Hey guys, just a very quick little thing because it happened to come in today and I'm super excited. Let's check out this like. Ah. It's a nice name cable. Either way, that was the boring part. So in here is the manual and power brick for it. Now for the actually super exciting part, my brand new assuming I can get the packaging on. Oh, here we go. My brand new Zune mm. 4 gigabyte Black Edition. Maybe with another product guide in there. Okay, so right here is. Look at that. Da -da 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 -da. Oh my god, it's still got the dirty buds in it. There's like the film stuff. Ooh, hey, look at this. This is neat. Official covers for the cable. And let's see. Yeah, the USB, as I said, was out there. Then he, oh my god, these are actually the dirty buds. Whoa, look at that. 
official Zune headphones. See, even like the... Yeah. Oh, this is so cool. From what I understand from Seller Man, the Zune does not work at the moment. I believe it's some kind of a battery thing. Won't stay on. But that's fine. I want to open it up and see if I can't get it working. But, oh, look at how cool and small it is, too. So far, here's my progression of Zune. So I got Baby. And I got Chonky. Look how tiny it is. Look at that. Ah, it's so good. Can't wait to mess around with it later. Ah, very quick update video, but still. Meep. Hello and welcome everybody back. I know it's been a little bit since I've done one of these, but I just want to show off some of the cool stuff that I got, you know? This is not all specifically Goodwill, but quite a lot of it is. You know, other stuff is just online retail, specifically eBay. But let's start out with the most common tat that you'll see. The DVD style stuff. Specifically, we will start out with... Here, I know. Let's start out with the CD. A CD of the soundtrack to Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. This one is a Goodwill, as I haven't taken off the sticker yet. Yeah, see, it's all in there. Case is broken, but that's fine. It even comes with its second disc and includes the. We've got more cases, so the front panel being broken on this doesn't really matter a whole lot. Yeah. Just... Might not matter, but it's still annoying. Yeah. Okay, so next up is DVDs. So the first one is actually one that I was very excited by when I saw it in the store. Anastasia. I got this, I think, last week. It's DVD widescreen, obviously. But the coolest part about it is it's still sealed. Look at that. This is the 20th Century Fox release of it. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that's who published it. It was released in 2010, which is impressive as well. I didn't realize they were still making DVDs of this in 2010. Eh, nowadays it's on Disney+, Plus, but this is still one of my favorites. Next up is one that I just had to have when I saw it at Goodwill. Justice League. It's, you know, it's the original Justice League. I think it's neat. Honestly, I think I like it better than the Schneider Cut, even. But, you know, that's mostly just because of the visuals. I don't like a lot of the Schneider visuals. Next up is a replacement copy of Star Trek The Movie. As you saw in that last one, the disc rot was real. This one, hopefully the disc rot is not going to be a problem. Cheeky. Then, Star Trek's 9 and 10, Insurrection and Nemesis. I've already opened it up and used them. But yeah, look at this. this. This is kind of interesting. Back here. It's like pretty neat looking, honestly. I quite enjoy the back artwork. And also, I mean, they're Patrick Stewart. Who doesn't like Patrick Stewart? Okay, so next up is something that isn't actually for me. This is a gift for my mom that will come later on. I just happened to get it at a Dollar Tree. The Partridge Family. Oh yeah, and also the Star Treks as well came from the Dollar Tree. This was, yeah, season two of Partridge Family. Mom really likes it. I've watched it with her before. I thought, hey, this would be a good little, you know, 
little present. I thought that was fun. Next up is something I'm super excited about. I paid about 15 bucks on eBay. The Best of HD DVD Family. So this has Happy Feet, Corpse Bride, The Ant Bully, and Scooby-Doo, and it's all still sealed. I haven't opened it up yet on purpose because the best of HD DVD family. And also, you know, I'm going to get my HD DVD drive working so I can rip them. I guess I could always do the old-fashioned thing of watching it on the player and just recording it in real time. Which I've done on the past, or in the past for HD DVD. But, you know. Ooh, hey, look at this. Hmm. That's interesting. Huh. The corp, or happy feet, is in a different aspect ratio from everything else. See? Weird. So next up is a few Blu-rays that I picked up at a local uh, pawn shop, actually. I just happened to see them in there. It was a dollar for each Blu-ray. So I picked up the Disney Parks, Where Dreams Come True. It's got both Blu-ray and DVD in here. By the way, look at this DVD. That's a really pretty DVD, isn't it? But yeah, it's just like a few documentaries about Disneyland and Disney World. I'm really excited to watch this. I just love Disney stuff and, you know. So now here is the most annoying movie that I've ever found. For some reason, Frozen, if you find this collector's edition Blu-ray... It's always the DVD in the case, and somebody took the Blu-ray out of it. I don't know why, but it's always that way. I finally found one. They seriously had eight copies of it there. I only found the one with a DVD and or with the DVD and Blu-ray. So annoying. I really wanted this for the commentary, and I kind of like Frozen. Not gonna lie. Next up is the Mummy Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, which yes. Mm, nothing different on the backs. This is the third in the Mummy movies. I have the other two on HD DVD, which I do prefer, obviously. But hey, it's all in here. So I figured, why not? I like, I like me some Brendan Fraser, and also this is the one that I've never picked up before. Thought I would give it a try. Then finally, one that I already have technically, technically on DVD, but it's Chip's copy and also it's very old. It was from when it first came out. Iron Man. Yes. Over in the other room, in Chip's room, we still have our original copy from day one, which is pretty fun. But yeah, this is just a Blu-ray copy, I believe, released. If I can find it on here somewhere. Uh. 2008, which is, yeah, pretty cool, and yes, neat packaging, it's all in there, worth picking up. Then finally, in the DVD Blu-ray category, Megamind 3D, yes, I told you I was going to get it. It's a 3D version of Megamind. Sadly, this is just a 3D Blu-ray. Doesn't come with like a Blu-ray and anything else. But it was brought to us by Samsung, as this was actually a pack-in with Samsung 3D Blu-ray players. Speaking of 3D Blu-ray, I'll be showing you that in a second. Okay, so we're back. And I just want to show off some other miscellaneous things before I show off the most exciting stuff. So, in this little box here, the battery for my iPod, so now that can be done. Yes, I'll show off the iPod when it's done, don't worry. Next up is the free T-Mobile lunch bag. I thought it looked nice. 
I got it for free by using T-Mobile Tuesday. What can I say? Nothing to complain about here. Next up are some card sleeves for the Harry Potter Battle of Hogwarts card game. Yes. Pretty basic, but I do like it. It's quite a fun game, and these card sleeves are very useful. Hey, what can I say? I'm a fan. Next up are two boyos. So we've got silver and nuclease. Now that I've shown off that they are silver and knuckles, now let's take them out of their package. Here is Silver in all of his glory. So he's got kind of a wobbly neck here. You can see. That's fine. Sturdy enough. He's got posable arms on a ball joint. Sadly, this arm is only rotatable. You've got legs that can move all sorts of ways. and these giant hair spikes. I quite like that. That is adorable, and it will be going next to Shadow on the shelf of the books. And now for the guy who everybody suddenly remembered isn't Shadow the Hedgehog. Knuckles! Star of possibly my favorite Sonic game. Sonic and Knuckles, or possibly, and also a good friend in many Sonic games. Knuckles here is a great map. For real though, Shadow, 3D Blast, and, and Knuckles are probably my favorite games. And specifically Sonic and Knuckles. I'm not a huge fan of Sonic 3 stages. But yes, he is adorable. He is a good boy. Now I'll clean that up and be back to you in a minute. Okay, and we are back. I've decided how I'm going to do this. First off, I'm going to show the eight, or seven, interesting items first. Then I will move on to the, well, you know, the the big purchase, if you will. It's actually ironically cheaper than these eight. So, behold, Pokemon Red. It's a brand new copy. It's a bootleg, obviously. I paid $45 for it. You might be like, $45 for it, but why? It's actually really well done bootleg. Don't worry, I won't be showing off the back of each of them, but yes, red, blue, yeah, this one's sticker is a bit off place, but that's fine, and interestingly, green, which never got a North American release, so I'm interested to see if this is just a ROM hack of gold, or of blue and red with the colors, if it's a... American, trans like if it's an English translation of the original look, if it's going to be something totally different, I don't know. Maybe it's not even on here. Either way, it looks pretty. Then yellow, which I already did have a bootleg of, but hey, it came free with it, so why not? Next up are, of course, Gen 2. I did get a set of all of the Generation 1 and 2 cards, so... You can tell it's bootleg because it's in an original Game Boy shell, but it's Game Boy Color game. Pokemon Gold version. Again, if you want to get any one of these, it's like what I paid for the whole set of them. 
Like, if you wanted to get a legit copy. I already have yellow and crystal legit. Here's Pokemon Silver. Which we did actually have. I used to have three copies of Pokemon Gold back in the day, but all of them stopped working. Some of them the batteries ran out on, which then I gave out to people, and I kind of wish I never did, because that, you know, nowadays would have been so much more. But the big reason why was because one of them actually, like, one of the contacts fell out of it. Yeah, that wasn't good. Then Crystal, which is in this very eye-pleasing, like, clear blue case. Also, this is a good example of how these work. See, it's in a half-size board. Because, you know, usually they go all the way up to the top. Interesting. And also they came with their sh dust covers and stuff. I think it was worth the investment. Also, if you do want to see what a North America or what a regular one looks like, so here's my other copy that is bootleg. So you can actually tell that the bootleggers are getting better at this. So here is the difference between two yellow versions. The one on the left is my old copy, the one on my right is the new one. As you can kind of see, the old one is much lighter color. The label is pretty much a as well done as you can get. Actually, I quite like the left one a little bit better because it has the ESRB and yellow version written on it, although I do know that it's less accurate. And also, in general, it feels cheaper. The new one is much nicer. And if you want to see what an original one looks like in comparison to all of them, very, very pale, with a very faded sticker, Nintendo Game Boy written up there. See, it looks a lot less like this old bootleg with the yellow version not being written anywhere. Although the cartridges are very similar color, just slightly off. This new bootleg does actually look very accurate in terms of the sticker design, though. Like, tell me that could not just be a new reprint of the sticker, like, from Nintendo. That is impressively good sticker work. So next up is showing off my copy of Crystal, but kind of two copies, because you'll see what happened later. I guess I'll tell you here in a second. So, here is the actual shell to Crystal, but... If you look inside, it's not Crystal at all. It's actually a different game because the holder broke on that part. Yeah, one time when Chip was fixing the battery, that happened. So he ended up getting a different game. I believe this was a Tom and Jerry game, maybe? Putting the old thing inside of here. It is an actual legitimate Crystal in here, though. Also, look at this. 2000 by Nintendo. You know? Interesting to see the evolution of game cartridges, really. Specifically bootleg game cartridges. And yes, I don't know what console this was to, but this weird, like, two... This thing was huge, whatever it originally came from. I've been using it for that because of obvious. But yes. So now... Sorry, Pokemon, move out of the way, please. For your new brother. Brother! No, but for the sharp Aquos 3D Blu ray player. Specifically, model BDHP35. Aquos was Sharp's brand. Specifically, they're kind of like a good brand too. As I found out, this was kind of the flagship 3D Blu-ray player they made. Full 1080p with smart capabilities. It had BD Live, ABC HD, HDMI, DTS, Dolby, Dolby, DivX, DVD, oh, and also it's an Energy Star Compliant. 
that's nice. As you can kind of see there, I got it for $15 at this pawn shop, which was pretty good. I do need a remote for it, obviously. Hey, I am the guy with the remotes. I like remotes. Then around the back here, you can see it's just a, you know, sharp Blu-ray player. Not much to say here. So it's got an Ethernet, but also it's got this USB adapter. It's thankfully still left in, which is actually the WLAN USB. Then you've just got HDMI and digital audio out. Which, hey, I'm actually very excited because I do love my digital audio. My current Blu-ray player has a coax-style audio. I can't remember what they call that one. Digital A, and this is digital optical. Or digital versus optical, maybe? Whatever it is. I prefer this one. And also, it just uses a very generic figure. Figure of 8 cable. This will be a fine replacement. And also, it just looks so visually, like, appealing. I know it probably looks very boring to you guys, but this is just like... Hmm. If this was wood grain, just imagine how beautiful that would be. Hmm. Annoying feature, though. This part where the Blu-ray disc is lights up, and it's super annoying. But that's the... Oh, wow, look at this. I just noticed that for some reason this place decided to put regular price on there too. Regular. $39.95. Yeah. I think I probably would have actually paid about that much for this, honestly. Hey, I'm a guy who's a sucker for 3D, and 3D is getting rare and rare every day. But yeah, that was kind of the more interesting finds. Oh, and also, I guess I should mention bit of a bonus thing, but uh, when me and Chip got those figures at Five Below, I also got a bag of Happy Chicks for, it was on a 80% off 125 clearance, so you know, very, very cheap. I like those Hasbro gummies, what can I say? But yes, thanks for having watched this quick ramble, and uh, Oh, yes. Also, dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. You can just barely see Sophia's secret project getting worked on. Uh, I'm gonna tease her with that until the day finally comes, but it's just gonna be fun. Either way, I've got a lot of Pokemon to catch up on. Right now I'm actually doing a playthrough of Sapphire. Just, you know, to catch you guys up on some interesting stuff. On my Kyogre Game Boy that Chip modded for me with a cool backlit screen. This is a legit copy of Sapphire. This is actually my original copy of Sapphire too. But yes. I hope you enjoyed.